Oh, All dude. new Tuesdays. We're a team. I fix them, you shine them up, you sell them. I guess this is why we drive these before we buy them. Rust to Riches on four wheels. The Car Chasers. Tuesdays, 10 Eastern. Coming up on the Susie Orman Show. Tick, 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 that tax deadline is near. Ways for you to maximize your money. Also, in survival mode, you just kind of feel that no matter what comes in, goes out. Right. Are you telling me that he has money that he spends that you don't have control over? Yes. Oh, and you ask me, can I afford it? I want to buy a North Face Denali jacket. I live debt free. I would hope so, wouldn't you? Yeah. Hi, everybody. I'm Susie Orman, and you are watching The Susie Orman Show. Two days. We are two days away from the day that your taxes are due, and I know what you're all doing right now. You are scrambling. You are doing everything you can to make sure that you file on time and that you're funding your retirement accounts and that you're doing what you can do to maximize your money. So with that said, I just want to make sure, because in this year, 2013, there have been some changes to retirement accounts in terms of how much you can actually contribute. And I just want to make sure that you're putting the maximum in there so in the long run, you really do maximize your money. Let's first talk about that you have two days left to fund whether it's a traditional IRA or a Roth IRA, you have two days left to fund your Roth IRA for a last year 2012 contribution. So if you put the money in now, you can count it towards 2012 and still put more money in for 2013. So let's talk about the maximums that I would like to see you put in to your Roth or traditional IRA. For 2012, if you're under 50, the maximum is $5,000. If you're 50 or older, the maximum is $6,000. For 2013, those maximums have actually increased. In 2013, the maximum you can put into a traditional or Roth IRA if you're under 50 is $5,500. Or if you're 50 or older, it's $6,500. Take advantage of the maximums. Now, you should also know in 2013, the maximums for your 401k plans have also changed. If you're under 50, the maximum is $17,500. If you're 50 or older, the maximum is $23,000. You should also know that when it comes to maxing out a retirement account or a 401k plan, which 401k plan should you be using? Now, new to the tax law of 2013, you can, even while you're still employed, convert the money that you have in a 401k plan to a Roth 401k if the company that you're working for has a Roth 401k. Should you do that or should you not? If they have a Roth 401k, I do think your new contributions should absolutely go into your Roth 401k. And if you want to convert some of your regular 401k money into your Roth 401k, do it little by little because, again, why? You will owe ordinary income taxes on that money, and you need that money outside of your retirement accounts to be able to pay for it. Now, here's the question you all should be asking yourself. Who of you out there should literally be converting from a traditional 401k to a Roth 401k? Listen, if you're about to retire next year, you're going to need this money to live on. Don't pay the taxes now to convert in most cases. If you're young and you have years and years for this money to compound literally tax-free, which it will in a Roth 401k, that is who should be taking advantage of it. Those are just a few of the things that you need to know about retirement accounts so you can do what? Maximize your retirement money. Let's go to Kim in Connecticut. What's on your mind tonight? 
Hi, Susie. How are you? Fabulous. Thank you. Good. Um, I owe a credit card company fourteen hundred and fifty-five dollars. To be and exact. It, 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 yeah, to be exact. It's probably more than that now because I haven't been, I haven't paid it in the last month. But it went into collections because I was out of work last year, and now I have a full-time job and I'm ready to pay it. They offered me a settlement um, of half of it if I pay it in half of it in full. Um, but then they said something about reporting it to the IRS. So I want to know what that means and is it worth it? Yeah, so here's the thing. Are you better off paying $1,455 exactly what you owe? Even if you do so, it will not help your credit score. Got that? It's yeah. already done its damage, so paying it to help your credit score isn't going to work. But okay. you pay it because you owe it. Right. So if you do not pay all of it, let's say you pay $700 of it, they then have forgiven a debt that you owe. Okay. Of seven hundred and fifty-five dollars. Mm -hmm. That seven hundred and fifty-five dollars will be reported to the IRS and you will owe income tax on that. I still mm -hmm. think that's a better way to go. Brenda, coming to us from California. Where in California do you live? I'm in Sacramento. Sacramento. All right, what do you need to know? Susie, thanks for taking my call. Um, I watch your show every Saturday Thank and you. since I've been following you. Um, I've been able to pay my credit card debt down to zero. Um, um, I still have the cards open because I'm not sure if closing them will negatively affect my credit score. And I do have a history of five years with one of the cards. But, however, having the cards open has costed me. Um, much to my surprise, they're charging me a $10 per month maintenance fee. On all cards. of them? On two cards? Those are on being, two cards. You're closing those, girlfriend. Those are gone. <laughs> <laughs> just, just close and they're them. also charging so, me a one hundred dollar a year annual fee. A girlfriend? No, no, no. Listen, I don't even have to go farther with this. You are closing <laughs> them down faster than a New York minute. I love that <laughs> saying because in New York everything goes faster. So do you know there's only thirty seconds in a New York minute? Just joking with you, but just close them down. Now you don't really have to worry because listen closely. Credit okay. history, how long your credit has been open, only accounts for ten percent of your FICO score, your credit score. Who cares? I'd rather have the, the $220 or whatever it's costing you per year to have these things. I'd rather have that in the bank. Really? Close them down. Let's go to California. Natalie, what's on your mind tonight? Well, it's so exciting to talk to you. Um, but here's my problem. I'm 28 years old, and I've always had a lot of fear and, and anxiety about money. And because of that, I just like to save. And I'm more excited about saving than doing anything in the world. <laughs> so I have a lot of money in savings, but I don't really do anything productive with it. I don't know where to put it. Uh -huh. um, I've been married for just a, you know, a little over a year and a half. We're both teachers. We're not making millions. He spends. I save. Um, we keep our accounts separate, and we only combine for one account where we pay bills from. And I think of all my accounts as mine, and I don't focus on joint savings or anything like that. Um, I want us to have long-term financial stability. I want to buy a home in a couple of years. And, I, you know, I don't want to be an old grumpy teacher who's forced to work and mm -hmm. not retire. So you I know, don't know what to do. You know what I find fascinating about this call, my dear Natalie, is do you okay. know that you said, I, 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 I want to do I this, know. I want to do that. So even though you are a we, you do not consider yourself a we. You consider yourself an I. Mm-hmm. That's already yep. showing signs of trouble in a relationship that is just a year and a half old, don't you think? Yes. <laughs> yes, all right. I, can I just ask you again a simple mm -hmm. question? If you could turn back the hands of time a year and a half ago, do you wish you never had said I do? Oh, no, absolutely. I'm very, I'm very happy. I have to shift my mind frame into having joint goals instead of independent goals. Mm -hmm. Do all of you listening right now out there believe our dear Natalie? Maybe yes, maybe no. All right, you can think that way for now, but here's the thing. How much do you have in your savings account? Um, 14000 All right, great. And how much do you know how much your monthly expenses are jointly? Yes, they're just over 2000 $2,200. All right, so you really need $16,000 in an emergency fund in case something were to happen. So right. first of all, if this is money that was your money that you saved 
prior to marriage, because California is a community property state. So that mm -hmm. means that he has 50% of everything that you've made since the day you were married. You should make sure that at least that amount of money that you entered the marriage with is held in your individual name and you never put his name on it. So that okay. money I would keep in a separate savings account just for you. The rest of it is going to be half his regardless of what happens here. You do know that, right? Right, right. Uh, are you sure you know that? Yes, I'm, we know in California. <laughs> All right, there you go. So, so right now, just keep it there. After you have that, look into opening Roth IRAs in your individual name, fund it up to $5,500, save for 20% down on a piece of property. Do those three things and you're on your way. But the thing that concerns me most is this I versus we, we versus I. Are you sure you're happy? It just seems like we're making all this money, but there's nothing to show for it. Are you telling me that he has money that he spends that you don't have control over? Yes. Oh. And later, uh, can I afford a callback? Herb was on the show eight months ago. He wanted to go to baseball fantasy camp. And one of the games we played in the Twin Stadium, we had an announcer. And when it was my turn to bat, he announced, now batting the star of the Susie Orman show, oh. Herb Brunel. Welcome back, everybody. Now, let me ask you, does this sound familiar? We can't seem to get ahead. No matter what we do, we live paycheck to paycheck. I just don't understand why we don't have more than we have. If so, you'll relate to my one-on-one -on -one tonight. Beth is here from Cleveland, Ohio. She is 44 and a licensed practical nurse. Beth is married to Brian, who is 47, cute, and a sales rep. Anyway, they've been married 18 years and have three children, 15, 16, and 17. Beth and Brian admit that they spent a whole lot on their children's education to the detriment of their retirement. Now, Beth wants to know how to turn this around. Beth, how are you, Beth? Hi, Susie. I'm fine. How are you? Good. So what is it exactly that you want to turn around? Why exactly did you want to come on The Susie Orman Show? Well, I just wanted to um, say that we're spending all of our money on our kids. Nothing is, seems to be left over, and um, we're just trying to find our way, but it just seems like we're making all this money, but there's nothing to show for it. We don't live in a big, extravagant house or drive uh, extravagant cars or go on vacations or anything like that. It's just we're um, in survival mode all the time, it seems like. All right, and in survival mode, you just kind of feel that no matter what comes in, goes out. Right, correct. Now, I've been doing this show for a very, very long time. And I look at your finances, and I don't see them in the same way that you see them, believe it or not. While it is true that you're 44 and 47, while it is true that you only have approximately $52,000 in a retirement account, only $13,000 in emergency funds, you have about $60,000 of equity in your home. Correct. The truth of the matter is, unlike most of the people who come on the show, you have no car loan debt, credit card debt, student loan debt, consumer debt of any kind. You don't owe anybody anything. Correct. So rather than looking at this glass half empty, you need to start looking at your life as half full because at least you're starting, Beth, on solid foundation. It's not like you have to dig yourself out of this hole that you've gotten yourself in. You're already on level ground because you don't have any debt. What is making an intelligent woman like you continue to spend money on her children when she knows there's no money to be spent on her children. Why does that happen? Any thoughts before I go on? I'm, I'm just not sure. Like I said, I, I feel that we're, we live as an as-need basis. When my children need something, I go get it. It's not that often. 
It's not like I'm going shopping every week for a new outfit, but it's as an as-needed basis. And like I have three kids all in high school and there's a lot of needs. There's a lot of needs and there's a lot of wants mm -hmm. that I am sure during the holiday season, birthday seasons, things like that, Correct. that get fulfilled as well. Now, right. Beth, tell everybody how much Brian is involved in your day-to-day -day finances. He's not. Tell everybody how many years you've been begging him to be so. 18. 18. <laughs> and, and what is his excuse as to why he doesn't want to have anything to do with it? He doesn't care. That's all on you, Mama Bear. Why is he saying that's okay? He, he doesn't like to give up his money. Mm. He doesn't <laughs> like to give up his money. Are you telling me that he has money that he spends that you don't have control over? Yes. Oh. That's the problem here. You have been in total control of the money. Correct. You have been as responsible as you can possibly be. You, however, have a husband, in your opinion, that is acting like your son versus your husband when it comes to money, correct? Correct. What is he doing with his money? Oh, um, he uses it. His expense money for traveling and, and that kind of stuff. And what else? Does he buy food with it? Does he go out? Yes. Does he buy new clothes? Does he buy electronic gadgets? Does he do a lot of fantasy football? No, no. <laughs> right. No, but he does. He um, he's, goes out a lot and spends money on food and and, you know. they, and how much are we talking about? A thousand a month? Two thousand a month? Um, about about. Six hundred a month. All right, but six hundred dollars a month is still enough that would be funding money in retirement accounts. So it's the six hundred dollars that's bothering you. Correct. So the real problem here has nothing to do with money. Do you understand that, Beth? You know, before we went on the air tonight, everybody, I talked a little bit to Beth to make sure she was okay. And I said to her, you know, this isn't a financial problem we're dealing with. She was kind of like wide-eyed as, as I saw her in her prompter, you know, my prompter, and like, really? Are you getting an idea why this isn't a financial problem? Yes. This is a relationship problem with your husband. No amount of money. Oh, you're sighing there. <laughs> you're sighing there. Because you know what I'm saying is true. You know, when somebody comes on and they sigh, that is a signal to me and all of you watching that the truth was just spoken. So Beth, here's what I'm asking you to do for yourself, for yourself and for your children as well, because you don't want your kids growing up and getting in a relationship like you're in. And I am sure that you want to save this relationship, that you want it to continue on, or at least you want to give it your best effort. So here is your action plan. Okay. You're going to take him and sit him down in front of the television, and the two of you are going to watch this together. I'm not even so sure it's a bad idea for your entire family to not watch this together. I think that the kids are old enough that they should see what their mother is going through, because on some level, they can feel it. And as they get older, they're going to be spending more money and making more demands and wanting to take the car out and wanting to do this. So after you have both or all five of you have watched it together. Let's have Brian come on with you and let's see what we can do together. That sounds he, great. All right, so Brian, come on. We love you, big boy. <laughs> Beth, take care of yourself. We're Me always too. here for you. Thank you very much. All right, bye-bye. Bye. Up next, you can't afford to miss. Can I afford it? We want a new driveway. Mm, you want. You said you want. You did not say I need. You said I want. Also, I want to buy a Google Nexus 7, but it's not for me. It really isn't for me. It's for my 80, 40 year old grandmother who lives 1,300 miles away. If I approve you for this, you're not going to give your granny your old one and keep this one, are you? No, no. No, I, no, no I... way. What do you want to buy? Google Nexus 7. A new driveway. North Face Finale Jacket. It is that time. That time being, you call in, you tell me what it is that you want to buy, and I tell you if you 
Can Afford It or Not, which is why we named the segment the Can I Afford It segment. Anyway, I'll ask you a few questions. You tell me about your money, and let's see what I decide. All right, are you ready? Crystal, what do you want to buy? Susie, I'm so glad to be on the show. Oh, um, thanks, I Crystal. <laughs> I want to buy a Google Nexus 7, but it's not for me. It really isn't for me. It's for my 80, 40-year-old grandmother who lives 1,300 miles away. Uh, we Skype two to three times a week, but her computer is over four years old. It's so slow. It drops the video. It freezes. It drops the call. It's really frustrating. So it'd be great if you could approve me. It's only $249. All right. So I just love that. <laughs> did, as you were listening to Crystal, everybody, how did it make you feel when she said, oh, her computer was over four. It's so old. It's over four years old. It makes me feel like, oh, God, how would Crystal define me. Anyway, just let me make sure on this. If you get, if I approve you for this, you're not going to give your granny your old one and keep this one, are you? No, no. No, I, no, no I... way. All right, Crystal, <laughs> show me the money, sweetheart. Okay, so my total take home is uh, 10738 uh, However, about half of that is rental income. So the take home is um, 5814 5, and the rental is 4914 Yeah. My, my expenses are 8864 for debt, I have um, highly leveraged, uh, 242 k 30-year fixed mortgage, 200 k for 30-year fixed mortgage, 89 k for 30-year fixed mortgage, and 59 k for 36-year fixed mortgage. I also have um, $1,241 in credit card debt, but it's only at 0%. That's uh, the only reason I've been paid it off. For savings, I have... 54000 in liquid, 1500 in investments, and 217000 in retirement. So my 84-year-old grandmother will be very happy if you approve me. And your 84-year-old grandmother doesn't have $249 to buy this for herself, because I'm here to tell you, I think your grandmother is probably be do is doing better financially than you. <laughs> well, she, she, she would think it was an extravagance, because her, her computer does work. It just doesn't... It, it, it works. It's just frustrating on both sides. All right. Listen, you can't afford this. You have debt. You don't have enough money in retirement. You're really short of emergency fund by a lot. You can't afford it. So, therefore, I have approved you. <laughs> Listen closely because it is important. People first, then money, then things. To have a granny who's getting older and you talk to her once or twice or three times a week or more and you can see each other, that in my opinion is priceless. So this $249 is an incredible investment in something that all the money in the world can never buy. That is the only reason I'm approving you, girlfriend. You better get your financial act together. <laughs> You're making too much money to have this little and too much expenses. All right, Sharon, what do you want to buy? Okay, Susie, how are you? I'm um, good, Sharon. How are you? Oh, I'm really good. I'm hoping to hear good news. We want a new driveway. Mm, you want. You said you want. You did not say I need. You said I want. All right, why do you want a new driveway? Well, our current driveway has a lot of dips and the pivots and the sinkholes in it. Um, it's not quite wide enough. Uh-huh. When, when you pull in, you get out, you're stepping in the grass. You are, and so is it dangerous? No. No, is it just something that's inconvenient? Yes. Yes, show yes. me the money. Okay, I'll show you the money. We have an income of $4,152 a month. Yes, ma'am. Our, our expenses are 3686 a month. Yes. Um, our home mortgage is 200000 30 year fixed. All right. Um, in liquid savings, we have twenty-eight thousand, thirty thousand in investments, and one hundred and ten thousand in retirement. And how are you going to pay for this? Well, we plan on using some of our liquid savings, and that then brings you down to like twenty-one thousand in emergency funds. When truthfully, you should have about thirty-two thousand. So now I'm almost eleven thousand dollars off of emergency fund just so that you don't step in the grass. Are you kidding me? You are denied. Save oh, your dear. money. Oh, but you know that, Elizabeth. What do you want to buy? Hi, Susie. Me and my husband would like to go on a last hurrah. 
before we have kids. <laughs> you know, and why is it so <laughs> funny? Is it like, obviously, I've never had children, so is it really that bad once you have kids that you got to do it, you know, before you have kids? One last hurrah. I will not ask you what that means other than you just want to go on a vacation. Hurrah. You're going to be hurrahing a lot if you want kids. But anyway, $8,000, girlfriend, show me the money. Well, Daisy, we have $9,877,000 in combined monthly income. Yep. Our expenses are, are 5297000 Yes. Yes. We have um, a 30-year fix, which we just refinanced at 217000 Yes. Yes. And then we had a, one student loan at uh, $1,200. We have 152000 in liquid savings, 30000 in investments, and 96000 in retirement. And how are you going to pay for this? We're planning to use our liquid savings to pay for it. To pay for it outright. So are you excited? Do you have, do you have the cities and the places that you're going to go? Because yes, you have been approved. You're Yay. doing so great for 30 years of age. Just remember, children are expensive. So check that out <laughs> before you get too many of them. Abby, what do you want to buy? Hi, Susie. Hi, Abby. What do you want to buy? I want to buy a North Face Denali jacket. You want to buy a North Face Denali jacket for $130. Is that a lot of money for a jacket, in your opinion? Um, kind of. Kind of. All right. And how long have you been looking at this jacket? Um, for a couple months now. A couple months now. All right, girlfriend, show me the money. I have an average take home of $325 a month. Yes. Expenses of about $30 a month. And how do you take that home? At the age of 16, are you working? Is that an allowance? What are you doing? Um, I have a part-time job, yes. and I've been babysitting for a while. I love that. All right, so go on. I live debt-free. I would hope so, wouldn't you? Yeah. Yeah, I know. All right, no debt. That's good. I have uh, $1,100 in liquid savings and 3500 in investment. All right, now before I say yes or no to you, how many of your friends have this jacket? A few, and my sister has one. Oh, like so this. so would you think you would have really wanted this jacket if your friends and your sister didn't have it, or do you want to be like all of them, and that's the real reason you want this jacket? I think I'd want it even if they don't because it gets pretty cold where I live. All right, and is this a want or is this a need? It's a want. It's a want. All right, you know what happens when it's a want on the Susie Orman Show? What? Uh, you have been approved. Really? No, really? Are you surprised? Not really. Not I was real. hoping it, I would Yeah, be. here's the reason why I approved you. You're only using about 10% of the money that you save. You're working for this money. It's not an allowance. And that you recognized it was a want. When you have the money and everything is all right, which it is right now for you, if you want something, that's what money is there for as well. So I don't want you to grow up thinking, I only could spend money if I need it. I only could spend money if I need it. If you stay out of credit card debt, you have savings, and you want something once in a while, girlfriend, you know you're approved on the Susie Orman Show. Time for a Can I Afford a Callback. I love this time. Listen, this is where someone I approved or denied in the past calls back to tell us what happened after the show. Herb was on the show eight months ago. He wanted to go to baseball fantasy camp and asked me if he could afford to make his dream come true. Here's the callback flashback. Herb, what do you want to buy? Oh, I want to spend $4,000 to attend the Minnesota Twins Major League Baseball Fantasy Camp. How long have you wanted to do this? Oh, for, for many, many years. How many at is le many? At least, ten, at least 10 years. Is it really worth it to have a fantasy for $4,000 when the truth of the matter is we might have a financial nightmare because we don't have that much in retirement. We don't have whatever. So it breaks my heart to hit this one out of the ballpark for you, but you have been approved. Herb, you go have a great time, and I love that you want to have a fantasy at the age of 74. Herb, are you on the phone there, boyfriend? I sure am. All right, so yes, I, I, I just have to ask you, did you do it? I did it, I did it, and it was fabulous. It Tell was me fabulous. all about it. Tell me, what was it like? 
Well, I'll tell you what. It was major league all the way. We had two full-time trainers. We, we had access to a massage therapist. I was on a team called the Warriors. Go Warriors. And we won the championship. I wanted to, first of all, thank you for approving me because it made it, the spending the money so much easier. My wife never thought that uh, I would be approved. And calling the show enhanced the whole experience because I came, became known in camp as the Susie guy. <laughs> but and, and at one of the games we played in the Twin Stadium, we had an announcer. And when it was my turn to bat, he announced, now batting the star of the Susie Orman show, oh. Herb Brunel. I only wish I could have been there to see it myself, boyfriend. I wish you could have been there, too. All right. So stay in touch and know we love you. Okay. Thank you very much. All right. Everybody want to be part? of the Can I Afford It segment. Your dreams can come true, too. Please go to my website, suzyorman.com, and you'll find all the information that you need to know there to hit it out of the ballpark with me right here. Next, I tackle trending topics in Ask Susie. Did you get that for a degree that you're currently using, or are you now just not even using that degree at all? I'm using it. Thank God, because otherwise, Bam, we would have had a Susie Smackdown here. If you think you need it, before you buy it, you better ask, can I afford it? In today's hard times, you need a financial reality check. The Susie Orman Show, Saturdays. Welcome back, everybody. We have Financial Literacy Month this month, and we are in the control room at CNBC headquarters. So many ways for you to get financially literate. Just watch me here. Come to me here, and here's how you do it. Take a look at your screen. You can send in an email, join me on Facebook, or send in a tweet. And if you put hashtag Ask Susie, it comes right here. If we choose it, we'll answer it on the air. All right, let's see what's trending right now. At Sweet Marie Love 7, if I want to take my 401k plan from a previous employer, should I turn it into a Roth IRA or traditional? Sweet Marie, listen to me. I love Roth IRAs. I have said forever on the Susie Orman Show, a Roth IRA is my absolute favorite type of retirement account, bar none. So, yes, you should absolutely start to convert it to a Roth IRA, but little by little, since I don't know how much you have in your previous employer's 401k plan, you don't want to take, if you have $50,000, and convert it all at once, because why? You will owe income tax on that $50,000. So take a look at what you have. Convert little by little, year after year, until it's all in there, but not so it really gets you on your income tax bracket. Let's see what else is trending. We have at Subar NYC, do both my husband and I need to have an eight-month emergency fund? Actually, you do not, my dear Subar. What I'd like to see is both of you have an eight-month emergency fund together, meaning just one. You don't need eight months for you, eight months for him, unless, of course, you're thinking about possibly not being with him for very long. If you want to have an eight-month together and three months just for yourself in case something were to happen, okay, but really, you just need one eight-month emergency fund. Let's go to webcam now. We are going to Ohio. Megan, you have a question for me? I do. Thank you for meeting with me, Susie. I have recently moved back to Ohio to regroup and take control of my personal finances. I have about $50,000 in private student loans, and I'm going to take the next two years to pay it off. Um, I'm going to live with my parents for rent free, rent free for those two years, and they're going to help by contributing $500 a month while I contribute $800 a month. By the end of that, I should have about $30,000 uh, paid off in my student loans. And my question is, um, should I be putting some of that money into an emergency fund, or should I go ahead and devote all of my money uh, to pay off the private student loans? I just have to ask this question. Number one, okay. whatever you got, $50,000 of private student loans, yes. right? What, yes. Whatever the reason was you got that, 
Did you get that for a degree that you're currently using, or are you now just not even using that degree at all? I'm using it. You're using it. Oh, thank God, because otherwise, bam, we would have had a Susie <laughs> Smackdown here. You have a two-year plan. After two years, you still will owe twenty thousand dollars. What is your plan for that money? Um, hopefully by that time I'll have more money myself to contribute, and I'm gonna just keep on contributing as much as I can. I want to just yeah. get rid of it. All right. You just said the answer to your question. If you just want to get rid of your student loan debt, which I think you should do, especially since it's a private student loan, then right. put 100 percent towards the student loan. If you want to save an emergency fund, go out there and get some more jobs. You've got to do something to bring in as much money as possible. So it's not just one job. Maybe it's not just two jobs. I don't care if it's three or four four jobs, but this is the time right here and right now to do as much as you possibly can. All right, let's go back to the studio, everybody, and here's what's coming up next. Karen wants to know, Susie, how are we doing? We got married and had kids later in life, so we're trying to balance our need to save for retirement and save for their college education. You're afraid about what grade I'm going to give you, <laughs> but you yourself have given yourself a C. That's what should be scaring you. Welcome back to the Susie Orman Show. Hi, Susie. I'm 51 and my husband is 49. We have two boys, ages 7 and 10. We got married and had kids later in life. So we're trying to balance our need to save for retirement and save for their college education, knowing I'll be 65 before the youngest gets through school. Our goal is for me to retire at 67 when my husband is 65. We want to finally enjoy some couples time. Susie, how are we doing? Oh, Karen, welcome to the Susie Orman Show. How are you tonight? Hi, Susie. I'm, um, I'm excited and nervous. Why but... are you nervous? Well... Uh, I'm used to being an, an A student as a child, and I don't know if I'm going to get an A tonight. Mm. So. <laughs> so, well, let's just put it this way. If you were going to grade yourself, what grade would you give yourself? I'd have to give us a C, Susie. I, so here's what's so sad. You're <laughs> afraid about what grade I'm going to give you, but you yourself have given yourself a C. That's what should be scaring you, not what Susie Orman's going to say, but what you yourself think about your own situation. But let's see what we have, get, we have going here, girlfriend, and let's show everybody your financial situation. All right. Karen is 51. Marty is 49. They have about $430,000 in retirement, $40,000 about in an emergency fund, $104,000 in investments, $285,000 is their home value, but they owe mortgage debt of $217,000. They have consumer debt of $1,700. So here we are at the ages of 51 and 49 with a net worth of about $640,000. No comment on that. Let's go on to the monthly income and expenses. So currently we have after-tax income of $6,100 a month. We have monthly expenses of about $4,760 a month, which that gives us an excess to put in emergency funds and retirement accounts and everything like that. $1,340 per month. So the question is, how are you really doing? Now, I am grading you not on your current financial situation. Okay. I am grading you on, do I think you're going to be able to meet your goal when you are 67 and your husband is 65? That's what I'm giving you a grade on. And if I were going to give you a grade, I would give you a B. Oh, not, okay. Not so bad. Not I think so you're, bad. I think you're doing pretty good. Good. Let me just tell you, if you continue to do everything exactly like you are doing now, when you retire in 16 years at 67 and 65, you are going to have approximately $7,300 a month of after-tax income. 
I have put your goal then to be at least $6,000 a month of expenses. That's what I think you need. That $7,300 comes from the $1.3 million that you're going to have in your 401ks if you keep investing like you're doing, about $145,000 or so in your Roth, along with your Social Security and the pension and everything. That's what it's going to give you. And that is not with Marty taking any Social Security at that point in time. Okay. So Marty could wait till he's 70 if he wanted to, and that would be extra money for you. So why didn't I give you an A? Very simply, you are underinsured. You're not contributing the max to your retirement accounts. So here is your way to an A. Number one, I need you to get more term insurance. You should have $1.2 million on Marty. You should have $500,000 on yourself, 15-year level term. You should each contribute the max to your Roth IRAs. You should continue to contribute $200 a month to your 529 plans, just like you're doing. Your children then will have about $30,000 each. When they go to school, they'll have to make it on that. I want you to look into long-term care insurance, and I want you to do that now. If you just did those few things, you would have gotten an A. Up next, one more thing that I want you to know. If we were so strict with them, they'll stop wanting to make money because they can't use it. And when you tell them it's for their future, they don't understand that anyway because they think they're never going to get older. Welcome back to the Susie Orman Show. Wow, that hour went fast. So that means it's almost a wrap here on the Susie Orman Show. But before we go, there is still one more thing that I want you to know. You know, every Saturday night when I do this show, it seems like something really strikes me that I find so fascinating that I want you to actually pay attention to. And tonight, this has to do with our Can I Afford It caller, Abby, who was 16 years of age, who called into the show simply to ask, Susie, can I afford to buy a $130 jacket? Now, Abby was making money. Abby had money in her savings account. And when I approved her, she was a little bit shocked. Now, here's why I find that fascinating. I want to use that as an example to all of you that kids really know about money, especially kids who are watching The Susie Orman Show. I can't believe how many children are out there and they're learning about money the right way simply by on Saturday night listening to the mistakes adults are making, learning from other kids that are calling in, and they're literally being financially educated right before your very eyes right here on this show. But I want you to understand, kids know Kids know when they're educated with money, when they're doing something wrong, when they're doing something right. But they also need to know, which is why I approved Abby in this situation, that if they're working hard for their money, that if they've saved their money, that they're not going to spend more really than 10 or 15 percent of what they saved, that this life isn't always about, I can only spend money if I need it. What's good is making money because I can't use the money when I want to use the money. If we were so strict with them, they'll stop wanting to make money because they can't use it. And when you tell them it's for their future, they don't understand that anyway because they think they're never going to get older. Now you know. So I want you to think about what I did with Abby. I want you to think about your children and what you're doing with them. But the main thing I want you to know is this. There's only one thing that really matters when it comes to money, and it goes as follows. People first, then money, then things. Now you stay safe.